want to welcome back to this early Monday's episode of Just Another Year Chicago. Breaking news, official, official, official. Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace have been fired from the Chicago Bears of their duties. Pace after six seasons, Matt Nagy after four seasons. We have the good, we have the bad, we have the ugly. The start for the new uh, GM and head coach starts today, and we'll name a few candidates who work best at the end of this episode, and we'll have more episodes moving forward before that's official. But Tony, initial reaction to finding out that Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy were released. Yeah, my phone's ringing off the hook. All the all the uh, good news here. So uh, it was it was kind of like that Khalil Mack trade for me when I you just kind of woke up and you were like, oh oh my gosh, the Bears got Khalil Mack. It was kind of the same way in a it's kind of a negative way of thinking about it probably, but it was just like oh my gosh, they got rid of Matt Nagy. And then so Nick texted and called me. He was like, hey. You know, Nagy's gone. We got to record. I was like, hey, did you see Pace? I didn't even know about too? Pace yet. Yeah. 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 So that all <laughs> kind of came me. out at the same time. Twitter's burning down because Flores and Zimmer, and it's a, it's a big time Black Monday. So my first initial reaction was, we got to get going on this coaching search. We got to get going on this, on this GM search. There are attractive positions open. We got to do it right. We got to do it now. And so the other thing, so I agree with you on that initial reaction, but I was more so shocked about Ryan Pace because the way they talked about him and the way he talked yesterday on, I forgot what radio show he was on. He was on some podcast early in the morning, but he talked very confidently that the bears had planned. So I think Ryan Pace was kind of blindsided by this, but maybe George McCaskey after yesterday's game was like, you know what? Let's clean it all up. So I kind of like, I knew we knew this was coming in regards to Nagy. It was that feeling you got in high school when finishing up a group project with a kid that didn't do anything and was just annoying. Like you brought him on, like hopefully, or the teacher put him on hoping he would contribute or or he or she would contribute, but it just didn't work out. So it's over. Now you can have the sigh of relief and move on without speaking again. So Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace are gone. And all I have to say is this is that the last three seasons of Matt Nagy's uh, coaching with the Chicago Bears, he was worse than Mark Tressman. So Mark Tressman only got two seasons. His first season, which wasn't too bad, Mark Tressman, his first year at a top 15 offense in 2013. But 2014, Mark Tressman had the same rating. So McCaskey gave him two more lives, in my, uh, arguably two more lives than Mark Tressman. Just want to throw that out. Tony, I know you don't like that take, but also no, no. Ryan, P- Ryan Pace, I'm I still do. shocked about. I do like that take, by the way. I, I have come around on the fact that uh, he has kind of become Mark trestman S. There was a great – I saw a great tweet of someone responding to our buddy uh, King Kumar on Twitter saying that Matt Nagy, he got to where he is not because of his football skill, his football acumen, but it, because he's a really good people person. and He's really good at just talking, basically, and, uh, you know, relating to people. So he's able to like, don't get me wrong. People do that all the time in job right. interviews, whatever it is, but it just kind of, it felt like it almost became too much. He's an offensive coordinator at best. It just is what it is. Not even at best. Kansas <laughs> city got rid of him for a reason. And that's, that's kind of, it wasn't him leaving. It was Kansas city was going to get rid of him anyway. And it just looked good that the bears wanted him as well. So like you said, there are, there are some good things to Matt Nagy. He's a great used car salesman, no doubt about, or any sort of salesman. He is amazing at that. So Tony, in reality, there is some good. So why don't you kind of run through that for everybody to, to, you know, kind of shine light on. He did do some good things for this organization. Yeah. So he's as hard as it is. Yeah, absolutely. Cause obviously we know it started off pretty strong. Uh, we led the Bears to their uh, their most recent NFC North title in 2018. They were 12 and four and had a top three defense. Thank you, Vic Fangio, and a top 10 offense. Thank you, Matt Nagy. He did that. <laughs> yeah. One coach of the year in 2018. Um, you know, obviously, Nick, like I said, Nick loves to argue that uh, it's Vic Fangio's award, but Nagy did come in here with a swagger and a hype to kind of get these guys to want to play for him. And that's what we, we've been saying the past couple of years, you know bad coach but nice guy people you know people person motivator um he did help the bears reach the playoffs in 2020 the last possible second <laughs> and uh, although we lost to the saints and uh, i'll never forgive javon Wims, uh the bears did they got hot at the end of the season and they won the, you know three of the last four games to fight for a playoff spot so it, That's kind of how it was this year though without the playoff spot they could have won yeah. three games in a row to end the season like matt nagy is like i hate he even said this at the beginning of the season, and this is something that drove me crazy. 
is that he said it takes a while for my offense to get warmed up. No, you have preseason, you have camp. It should be warmed up before week one of the NFL season. So yeah, like he's a diesel engine instead. You know, no, dude, just start it up. You know, yeah, start it up, get it going. So Ryan Pace, though, also, I I am really still shocked about Ryan Pace. I thought he could have stayed and done something very special, like you know whether that get promoted because Ted Phillips still isn't fired. That's another thing that I'm kind of initially shocked about. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we are recording at 9.08 a.m. on Monday, this January 10th, 2022. So Pace did a lot of good things. There's no doubt about it. Tony, I know you're going to kind of run through it, but I, I, I'm still pretty shocked. Yeah, me too. Cause Yeah, so we'll kind of just go through the good here, and then we'll go through basically why they ended up making the decision they made. So, uh, yeah, some of the good stuff he did, he did, you know, he drafted and signed the current roster minus uh, Pat O'Donnell. It's funny. I saw some Pat O'Donnell hate yesterday. Get out of here with that. We don't need a rookie punter. Uh, no, but he we do did. not need a rookie punter. <laughs> yeah. So he, he drafted and, and signed again, like these guys, Roquan Smith, Eddie Jackson, obviously traded for Khalil Mack, uh, which, you know, people are starting to sour on that trade. At the, it was a good trade. Akeem it Hicks, trade. great signing. Robert Quinn ended up being a, a, a good signing. I'd say a net positive signing uh, all in all. Danny Trevathan, Adrian Amos, Nick Kwiatkowski, the Polish hammer. Um, and he had, he was. Will Herbert, Daz Newsom, Her- uh, Thomas Graham Jr. He had a good draft this year. Well, yeah. Really so what I was going to say here is he is like the, the king of late round steals as a GM. He was really good at that. That was something that was undeniable. Um, he got, you know, guys like Eddie Jackson who fell because of injury. Uh, he, he still saw that he could be good. And I know. You know, where we have a different opinion on him now than we did a couple of years ago, but at the time, for sure, absolute steal. Bilal Nichols, Travis Gibson, Larry Borum, Jalen Johnson, who should have been a first round pick, uh, Dave Montgomery, Darnell Mooney, like you said, Khalil Herbert, my guy, uh, Thomas Graham Jr., who seems to be like a guy that it will absolutely turn into, a, you know, the guy that's going to be across from Jalen Johnson, uh, Tevin Jenkins. Or, uh, so he got better in the early round. Kind Over time. Of, kind of. So obviously we'll touch on his misses, uh, but Roquan Smith was an absolute hit. best linebacker in the NFL, in my personal opinion. Eddie Goldman, I know this year has been weird. The COVID stuff's been weird. I'm sure there's behind the scenes stuff. But he was a beast for a long time. Absolutely, it's it's a good draft pick. It, he is he's a good NFL player. Justin Fields, he's gonna turn out. I'd like to think we'll see. I guess as long as they nail the next GM and head coach. And Tevin Jenkins. I know a lot of weird stuff happened this year, but once he's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame in 15 years, like Joe Thomas, because he hasn't missed a game, uh, we'll forgive him for missing the first, like, 12 games of the season. That's fine. So, I mean, that's the good. Oh, Nick, you, you got any comments on that? No, guy? no. I was going to say, like, I it, it takes time to develop. This was more of a rebuilding year, and I know there was a chance to make the playoffs. Like, there was a lot of hope because mm-hmm. this team, it's so weirdly structured because it's it's a good team with a bad head coach and leader. So this is where the bag comes into play. Yeah. Start with Matt Nagy. Absolutely. So the offense has never been higher ranked than 23rd in the NFL after 2018. Number one, he has had four starting quarterbacks in four seasons, actually five. If you put Chase Chase Daniels in there, because Chase Daniels had to start a few games when Mitchell Trubisky was out. So you had Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, He did go to a pro bowl one time, but that was only because he was a reserve. And I forgot who was in the Super Bowl that respected season but Mitch took the final spot on the reserve. Um, Nick Foles. You had Nick Foles, who disaster of a contract. Great guy, disaster of a contract. You had Andy Dalton, who another veteran signed contract. Tony and I have our differences on that. But, and then you have Justin Fields, who you've had two, you have had two young, very large potential quarterbacks come into your building and you led them to become worse in, in ways. In ways, you know, Justin Fields obviously getting killed out there because Matt Nagy won't run him a special play. So then let's go. Matt Nagy never did better than 500 after 2018. He was 12 and four in 2018, lost in the wild card playoffs to the Eagles. I don't take that much blame. Cody Parkey is literally the worst man ever to walk on in a Chicago Bears uniform. Uh, eight and eight in 2019, missed the playoffs. Eight and eight in 2020, snuck in the playoffs. It's because they added that seventh uh, spot for the Chicago Bears are not just for the Chicago Bears, but that the Chicago Bears took over that first year. They lost in the wild card to the Saints, and they only scored a touchdown in the last possible second to Jimmy Graham, who literally walked out of the end zone. He was 6-11-20 and and this past season, and that was the nail in the coffin for Matt Nagy. He never scored more than 20 points in a playoff game. In 2018, they lost 16-17 to at Soldier Field to the Eagles, and they lost 20-9 to to the Saints in 2020. 
pretty much just saying this. He left everything on the table, came here with a lot of hope, as he always, he always would say, leave everything on the table, and failed Bears fan for three consecutive seasons. I don't even consider that playoff berth really special. It was COVID season. It was weird. It was The Bears did not belong there. Let's just say that. Let's go to Ryan Pace real fast. The Mitchell Trubisky trade-up that we lost a bunch of picks for that Mitch ended up not even working out for the Bears. Kevin White. It, I don't blame Pace too much for this, but it goes on the GM for taking him. White obviously did not work out injury prone for the Bears. It was just overall a mess. He's still in the NFL though, which is crazy to me, but good for him. Signing veterans to bad contracts. You got Nick Foles. You have Mike Glennon. And yes, you have Andy Dalton and Chase Daniels who should have only been backups. I agree. Tony, I agree. You stick with one or the other in regards to Andy. If Andy Dalton was going to start all year, you stuck to your guns with that. Yeah, Even if George was- McCaskey's at your throat. Yeah, there was no reason to have you're paying Nick Foles a ton of money who you traded for as well and have Andy Dalton and now you traded for, you know, Justin Fields. It's too many people, too many cooks too many in people. the kitchen there. Yeah, just too so, much. And then obviously the big one, you hired Matt Nagy. Well, you hired John Fox that didn't work out, but that wasn't yeah. supposed to work out. That wasn't supposed to work out. It was just an absolute, it was, the roster was literally Pharrell McPhee and freaking Lamar Houston and just this weird Eddie time. Royal and uh, Eddie yeah. Royal, um, <laughs> uh, Travis uh, Porter Jr. The, not Travis Porter. Um, the guy who uh, the Saints hero uh, that Tracy Tracy Porter. Tracy yeah, Porter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even though he did play well for the Bears for a couple games, uh, but like another letting Leonard Floyd go. Though we got Robert Quinn that ended up working out in the second year. Leonard Floyd every time the Bears have played the Rams since has just ripped up the offensive line. So. And then this is a personal opinion. I know Chuck Pagano wasn't a bad defensive coordinator, but the defense regressed and gained new bad habits under Pagano. So hiring Chuck Pagano as your defensive coordinator at the time seemed fine because he was a head coach at one point, but I would have rather have brought in someone else, especially after Vic Fangio was gone. So, but Tony, do you have any more comments about that? Um, I, no, (laughs) no, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy it's over. I'm happy to turn the page, a, a new leaf. Um, I don't know, whatever all those phrases are. Let's just get it right, man. Let's so, just get it right. <laughs> get it right. I, I agree. Like, it's a good day. It's a good day to be a Bears fan. Wear your stuff with pride. Final comments, though, is that exactly. But one thing to look out for is I know Tony and I, I don't know if you change your opinion, Tony, but Jim Harbaugh seems like a very strong candidate to be a head coach for the Chicago bears after looking at his record against the Packers when he was with the Niners. And also you and I talked about having a dual defensive coordinator, bringing back that Fangio Harbaugh, you know, duo, you never know. All all I'm saying, that's, that's all I'm saying is that why not flirt with it? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely an option for sure. And I guess he did do, he did pretty good with, you know, with Colin Kaepernick back with the Niners that made the Super Bowl. Of course, I just, it does worry me because I know this year was a little different. They finally beat Ohio state and everything over at uh, Michigan, but maybe he, they just haven't recruited quarterbacks well at Michigan, but I just don't think he's nah, good he for never quarterback really development. It. So I really yeah. think that was kind of, that's the thing that kind of scares me. I, if we're going to go with a defensive guy, that's fine. Or a guy that's kind of, you know, just harder, you know, just more energetic. Yeah. But I I'd rather try to go with a Kellen Moore type, an offensive guru type, to try to get the most out of Justin Fields at this point. But we'll talk about that more, I'm sure. We will talk about that on our next episode, our next episodes when we do our season review of each position. Who's our biggest boss? Who is the biggest improvement in what's going on moving forward? Ted Phillips is still the president of football operations for the Chicago Bears. There's a 1 p.m. meeting with the McCaskey, just the McCaskies. Ted Phillips is not scheduled after, so stay tuned. He might get canned as well. But with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. Happy Monday. Happy Black Monday, I guess, or, you know, Dark Monday, uh, whatever whatever you want to put it as. But with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Dick Brody. Join alongside Tony Speedo.